For over 45 years, the Everglades Education Program has introduced nearly half a million South Florida children to their backyard national park. The Shark Valley Day Program is one of our most popular curriculum-based programs, bringing thousands of fourth graders to the Everglades every year. Our program employs the model of team teaching, where teachers and rangers work side by side to facilitate a positive learning experience. Your active involvement is vital to the success of your field trip, so thank you for all of your preparation. We wish you and your class a fantastic journey in the Everglades. Lead teachers are required to complete a one-day training course before being certified to bring their classes on our program. This video refresher course is for teachers who have already been to one of our workshops. If two years have passed since you've been on one of our programs, or you just need a refresher course, you've come to the right place. This video will help you visualize what environmental education programs are like at Shark Valley. I would encourage you to take a look at your manual. This is given to you during your training at Shark Valley, but it can also be found online. There is lots of information in this manual that we may not cover on this video. Although it can be downloaded, the experience cannot. So make sure to watch this video and enjoy. Pay attention as you may be quizzed on things that happen in this video. As you plan your Shark Valley program, the logistical details are very important for a productive day. Class and school sizes may vary, but our tram can accommodate a maximum of 64 individuals. Therefore, your bus will arrive with a maximum of 64 people, consisting of a maximum of 58 students and 6 adults, two of which must be workshop certified teachers. There must always be at least one adult per 10 students and one certified teacher per 30 students. All participants, including chaperones, must arrive on the bus. If anyone comes in a separate vehicle, they will not be allowed on the program. When your bus arrives at Shark Valley, you'll check in at the fee station and then proceed to the parking lot where a ranger will board the bus to greet you and assist with parking. Once parked, the ranger will ask the students if they brought cell phones, binoculars, or other prohibited items. If so, the teachers will be responsible for collecting them. It's best to do this before arriving. Lunches should arrive pre-packed in copy paper sized boxes like these. If your lunches are not already consolidated, as shown in this example, they will have to be collected on the bus. This will take up valuable time, so remember to box them up beforehand. One ranger will take all the adults to help carry and load the lunches onto the tram, while the other ranger gives an introduction to the kids. Notice that garbage bags do not load easily on the tram. If you have a full tram, somebody will have to sit in those seats, and it may not be comfortable. Copy paper boxes, on the other hand, slide perfectly under the seats, leaving you more legroom. The ranger with the adults will then review the day's logistics and rules. The other ranger, in the meantime, takes the kids to the bathroom, where the adults will meet them later. Both rangers then lead everyone for an introductory activity together. The rangers split the students into two groups and lead them to the tram. One group loads in the front tram, and the other in the back. After the rangers review the tram rules, you're off on your adventure. Team teaching is a vital part of our program, making you an important part of your students' experiences. Let's look at your team teaching role during the tram ride. Our trams are divided into two sections, the front and the back. Both rangers will be seated at the front of the tram. One will be driving while the other one is narrating. The teacher in the back of the tram won't have the opportunity to communicate directly with the ranger. But don't worry, we have given you all the tools you'll need to make your trip a success. You will have a dry erase board. When the ranger in the front tram asks a question, discuss it with your students, come to a consensus, quickly jot down the answer, and show the ranger what you came up with. 
you will also have a prop bag. This will be exactly the same bag that the ranger in the front tram will have. So for example, the ranger asks the students to take a closer look at limestone. This will give you the opportunity to pull out the limestone from your prop bag and pass it around to the students to give them an example to see and touch exactly what the front tram is doing. Your participation and preparation is essential for the success of your trip. If you're engaged and interested, that will set your students up for a fantastic day at Shark Valley. During the ride to the viewing tower, the tram makes stops. You look at a water sample, and the rangers will collect and pass out paraffite into the kids to touch. You will also stop for a discussion about water users in South Florida. The ranger will instruct each tram to select three students to participate in the activity, so be prepared to assist in selecting kids. Come on up. Does he look like a farmer? No. no. So let's make him look a little more like a farmer. Does this look like a farmer hat? Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. To get that food somewhere, we need to do some building. All right, we've got someone that we call a developer. So we need to make sure that all of these very important people get water out here in South Florida. And Mother Nature allows the water to come to the Everglades, and there's lots of water that come down real quick, right? And sometimes they go draining into the canal. Now, we're gonna actually use our aquifer water, and we're gonna start with a farmer. So please squeeze it to grow your peppers. Okay, thank you. Now we have our tourist who wants to take an hour-long shower. Do you think you can get an hour-long shower in there? Okay, perfect. Now, alligator, it is time to make your gator hole. Please get your water. <laughs> Who's in control of the water now? Humans. The farmer, the construction person, even our tourists, us humans. We can either put more water into the aquifer, which remember was going to take lots of money, lots of time, and it wasn't going to happen tomorrow, or we could take less water out of the aquifer today, tomorrow, and the day after. Throughout the ride, Nature will present many surprises and opportunities for discussion. The ranger will point out plants, animals, and habitats. But the more knowledgeable you and your students are, and the more you stay engaged, the more memorable your trip will be. Although the rangers are leading the activities for the day, we need your help in keeping an eye out for safety concerns. Keep an eye out for alligators near the trail, and keep the kids at a safe distance. Know how to recognize fire ant mounds, and make sure kids do not stand near them after they've been disturbed. Be respectful of tourists. Don't let your kids crowd the tourists. But also, don't let tourists take over your program. You can remind tourists that this is a private program, and they should not be photographing your group. When your tram arrives at the tower, keep the kids in the tram as you hand out lunches. Then you and the rangers will lead them to the lunch area. Normally we sit in the grassy area near the bathrooms, but if it's wet or extremely hot like it was this day, we will take them under the restroom shelter to eat. Bring disposable lunches because there is no time to carry items back to the tram. Everything has to be discarded at the lunch station. Crows may watch you while you eat, planning to steal anything you take your eyes off of, and they will try to eat any crumbs you leave behind. People food is unhealthy for crows, and it encourages bad behavior. So please clean up together and leave your lunch site spotless. Trash is not only ugly, but it can be mistaken by animals for food with tragic consequences. After lunch, you will split into your two groups again. One group goes up for activities on the viewing tower. Up there, the group takes the opportunity to listen to the sounds of nature. You are looking at something very special we call wilderness. Do you guys want to experience the soundscape of the Everglades? Yeah. All right, your 60 seconds of silence begins. All right.
right, you guys did amazing. Okay, what did you hear, Stephanie? I, I heard the sound of birds. The sound of birds? When the tower group comes down, they trade off with the other group. The ranger may then lead the students on a short trail or do other activities depending on conditions. You may be walking through areas with scratchy and poisonous plants, biting insects, and uneven and muddy terrain. So controlled behavior, long pants, and closed-toed shoes are required for all participants. The rangers then lead you back to the tram. You'll continue discussions on the tram ride back to the visitor center, with students returning in the opposite tram they rode out on. To make the field trip a success, we require some preparation ahead of time. Pre-site classroom education is vital to the program. Students with good pre-site education focus their energy and curiosity, making connections between what they've learned in the classroom and what they are seeing on site. Choose what interests you and fits your lesson plans. We recommend starting with the habitats we will see, the freshwater slough, the sawgrass prairie, cypress stones, and the hardwood hammock. You could have students study species that live in the Everglades, talk about threatened or endangered species, or native versus non-native species. Geology, limestone, the aquifer, and the Everglades water flow are also a great focus. Our video series, Everglades Mountains and Valleys, is one easy place to start with your class. We notice when your class comes well prepared, and it allows us to explore the Everglades in depth. There are some things that are important to bring, and others to leave at home. Name tags are really helpful for us, but not all name tags are equal. Some traditional name tags don't stick well in the humidity and they end up falling off. We found that masking or packing tape with a large name printed in permanent marker is easier to read, cheaper to make, and stays in place. Water bottles are also encouraged, especially if the day will be 80 degrees or more. So check the weather before you come. Let your students know there won't be time for purchases, including stopping by the gift shop or vending machines. So it's best if students leave money at home. While on program, they're also not allowed to have any electronics or other devices, including cell phones, cameras, or binoculars. This allows students to focus on what they are experiencing rather than focusing on their equipment. Only teachers and chaperones may take pictures if they do so without interrupting the program. If students want to take pictures or go to the gift shops, we encourage them to use their free entrance certificates to return with their families and do these things on their own time. Finally, remember that our programs fill quickly and the program and buses are paid for in advance, so do not expect to reschedule due to weather. The program will be modified for thunderstorms. For example, we have indoor activities while we wait out a storm. Thunderstorms are normally short-lived, so we usually have time to continue with the program when the danger of lightning clears. We will go out in the rain, however, so bring ponchos or just be ready to get a little wet if it rains. We expect your kids to return the buses tired but happy. Many kids remember this day for the rest of their lives, so we look forward to working with you, making this day special for you and your class. <laughs>